Uh, this is Mike, pronouns he, him, calling him from Canada, thinks that Forrest is inconsistent about definitions regarding trans people and animals in the Bible. Uh, Mike, who isn't J. Mike, you are on The Atheist Experience. How are you doing today? I've never had a bad day in my life, Forrest. Thanks for asking. I love that. Love that. So what's going on? Yeah, what, what, which specific things do you think I'm inconsistent about with these topics? Absolutely. I don't mean to start this confrontational, but no, not at all. Dare you question Gandalf, one of the Maiar and a member of the Astari Order. There's a difference between, right. uh, so a wizard arriving exactly when he means to says, I'll tell you I'm coming at six, but he knows he's going to show up at seven. So he meant to get there. When he says he was delayed getting to Frodo, he was getting there as fast as possible, but something got in his way. His destination was delayed by Saruman. Possible, something came up. Uh, but you're right. Uh, we'll try to keep it tight, so let's not uh, let's not do Lord <laughs> of the Rings. So, uh, <laughs> right. Um, so one of the things that uh, what happened was I was listening back to a show uh, a few months ago that you were on, and you had two calls. One call, someone was calling in saying, are asking about uh, trans people and how can you have, uh, and they were saying, well, we have this strict definition. Trans people, like men are men, women are women. How can you uh, switch that? We have this definition. And your response, I, I might be misquoting you a little bit here, but was along the lines of, these things are categories that we create. And that's, you still roughly agree with that? Genders bimodal, uh, genders are categories we kind of invent. So are you asking me if I still hold to that that ideology or that, that idea? Yeah. 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 So, so gender is spectral. Um, and gender is something that varies from culture to culture, from generation to generation, from person to person, from day to day. So because of that, it, it's impossible to say a man is this and does these things and, and, and acts these ways. And a woman is this and does these things and acts these ways um, because it's going to change in 50 years. It's going to change in a different part of the world. It's going to change from one person to the next within the same community, within the same you know time frame. So like it's it's not something that you can just pin that way um, because especially because of, of you know gender performance theory. Um, gender is something that we do more than something that we are. Uh, and so it's it's just it's a set of uh, beliefs, behaviors and, 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 and actions that are socially constructed. Uh, and therefore it cannot be, but we, we can't quantify gender is what I'm saying. We can't, we can't, you know, have a, there's no qualitative or quantitative thing that we can sit here and say, okay, this, this has X, Y, Z characteristics. Therefore it is a woman. That doesn't make any sense. It, it's just a state of being that we put different labels on that we are labeling what's going on in the world. You know what I mean? That's, that's the point that I was getting at there again. You know, I, I know you don't have the exact quote of what I said. I don't either. But like that's how I would summarize that general idea at this particular moment. Uh, and then you think I'm being inconsistent with it. I'm assuming I said something different at a different time that maybe maybe I was unclear about what, what's going on with that. Well, and well, here's the thing is that the inconsistency. So I just want to flesh out a little bit more of that and then we can touch on it uh, if that's OK. But the sure. I, mean, I don't know if I super agree with the performative nature of gender. I think that there are trans people that are what they are, regardless of if they perform it or not. Um, well, to, to be clear, when I say performative, I don't mean putting on a show trying to convince other people. I mean that what, what I mean by performative is that gender is an, ex, an outward expression and an action as much as it is an internal feeling and sensation. It's something that you do okay, so, in the world. So I'm not saying that trans people are playing dress up. I'm saying that all people with any gender no, 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 no. are, are, you know, doing a, an action of being the gender, not just having the internal sensation that gender performance is, is applying to everybody. But what I'm saying is that a, a, like a trans femme person who mm. isn't out to anyone and still presents mask is still trans. It is still a, it's still a woman. They're still yes. a woman, even if they yeah, don't perform absolutely. any feminine behaviors. 
So that's the, just this little thing I have with the performative definition of gender, because someone yeah, so, be a woman and uh, they don't perform any outward behaviors of being a woman. Yeah, may, maybe of, the yeah. word performance is, is mis misleading. It's it's the the idea of gender performance is that it is something that is displayed in your daily habits. It's something that you are doing all the time. It, it doesn't mean that somebody can't still be closeted or anything like that. It, 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 it's just an addition to, you know, gender as a feeling or as, as something that's inherent or internal. Um, it's, it's the way we describe gender as a set of cultural norms, as opposed to just a set of, you know, a, a personal identity or, 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 or feeling. Um, so it's, it's the way that we describe when we talk about gender theory and like a cultural standpoint. So like, yeah, it's, it's, you are absolutely right. A trans woman who is not out, who is, you know, still dressing and presenting masculine, who is, is, you know, uh, not socially transitioning or anything like that. Of course, they're still a woman because that none of those things apply to womanhood or manhood or anything like that. Those are, I, you, you could make the argument they are performing masculinity, but it would, that would only lead to more confusion if you were to phrase it that way. Right. Well, yeah. And, and that's not, that wasn't even the thing that I wanted to. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. But the, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the, the thing about it is that in this conversation and mm -hmm. you can, if anything I say is not what you feel right now, just correct me. Like I'm not holding it anything is that um, when we come up with what is a man or a woman or envy or anything around that spectrum, these are mm -hmm. definitions that we are deciding. Because you said something. I, I, I really like the line. You said, like, um, nature is fuzzy and gray, and we try to put boxes on it to make definitions. That sounds like some shit that I would say, yeah. <laughs> and I like that. I like that. And then you got another caller who was, um, I think, a young Earth creationist, and they were talking about and you got into a conversation, and this is actually tied into what the, the show question was about, is are humans apes? And mm -hmm. you had this conversation with this person where they said, well, no, in the Bible, God made man, and then he made animals. Or I, I think in Genesis 2, it's the other way around. I can't remember. But anyway, they were made yeah. separately. And so, in typical forest style, you went through, well, first of all, we're mammals. We got nipples. We got mammaries. Uh, and then went through a couple other things that defined us, defined us as apes. That, that's something you would say or do right now. If I said humans aren't apes, that's what, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to start the show with, but we had to, we're on a time frame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. But the problem I had, because this guy was saying, well, and this is where I think the contradiction comes from was that he was saying, uh, according to the Bible, humans are not animals. And then you said humans are animals, uh, according to biology. And the and looking back at the prior thing, we said definitions of these things on the trans issue, we said definitions of these things are fuzzy and we're kind of making these boxes up. Um, because nature is fuzzy. Nature doesn't come with boxes. We make the boxes. Nature is fuzzy. So, but that's a definition that we're using. We're creating definitions. So one could say, like, you know, you've heard the tomato thing. Tomatoes are a fruit, but like uh, in a biological sense, but they're not a fruit in a culinary sense. Like if you make like a veggie terrine, you can put a tomato in there. You're not going to call it a fruit veggie terrine. So I think that someone, and this is kind of the main case I'm trying to put forward, is that someone who's like a biblical literalist can say by a biblical definition, humans are not apes. Okay, so you're, you're saying that you're, it sounds like your challenge to me is that because I put things like gender and species and everything else on the, the same playing field and by saying that, all of these are boxes that we as scientists draw around nature 
We look at nature. Nature does what nature wants to do. We find patterns. We draw boxes around those patterns. Doesn't mean that the boxes are necessarily real, and that's why the boxes change from time to time. Those are all things that I say. Your argument is that then somebody can come back to me and say, well, because the boxes are arbitrary, I choose to draw them differently, and you can't say that I'm wrong. And in my choose choice of the boxes, I can say that trans people are invalid and that humans aren't apes or animals and, and blah, blah, blah. Is that, is that about what I'm getting? Uh, pretty close. I wouldn't push that trans people are invalid. You opened with it, so I didn't know if you, it was necessary that it, it be involved. <laughs> Can I just point out that I, I well, really, I, like for the audience or yeah. anybody else, not that any, not like anybody is not aware, but if anyone isn't aware, what Forrest did just there is like really good in, in a dialectic. Say, it's, this is what you're saying. This is my view. That steel man's agree. I just Sorry, I just wanted to give kudos to that because that, it makes a conversation work so yeah. well. So I try, I yeah. try. Uh, yeah, oh, I, sorry, I'll, I'll shut up now. I just, I that's, that's all I have to oh, offer no, right no. now. I appreciate that. No, that's very kind. I I would argue with it, it with that being the the challenge. I would argue um, specifically right. about the animals thing first. Um, that the box of ape is within the box of animal, and the box of animal is within the box of life. And so, like, it, there there has to be some fundamental reality that we can agree on. And there's a certain point where all of our boxes are going to be the same. Um, so you talk about, like, you know, animal versus plant versus fungus versus whatever. It comes down to cell type. Like, you, you look at their cells and you can tell the differences. And yet, there are plenty of living things that fall outside of that, that cannot be classified this way. That's why we have protists. We had, you know, the protista used to be a whole kingdom and then it kind of wasn't anymore. And now we have animal like protists and plant like protists and we have different. But at the end of the day, these are things that simply cannot be classified as plants or animals. They're just kind of fuzzy, weird in between gray areas that still exist and still matter and can still be tested and still have real ramifications in the world. That doesn't mean that the box of animal and plant and all these things aren't real. So if you're talking about humans being great apes. If you accept the fact that we, you know, Jay, Mike and I were talking about this just before the show. If you accept the fact that humans are mammals, you must therefore accept the fact that humans are animals because the mammal box is within the animal box. And so it, it's like saying, yes, this is a Subaru, but it's not a car. That doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? That you can't say that. And so, like, I'm still looking I'm, for those non animal, uh, non animal. Right. Mammals. Yeah. So give me can, an example. You can email, of, you know. Jay yeah. Right. Yeah. No. And yes, and, that's the thing. Yeah. And, um, and it's the same thing if we talk about, you know, with, with, with gender, one of the challenges that I give to people who, who claim that, you know, sex and gender are the same thing and that they're strict binaries and that they fit in these little boxes is, can you give me a definition of man or woman, male or female? Let's say, so let's say, you know, the popular one is woman. That's the one that everybody likes to jump through so they can lump homophobia and sexism together into the diarrhea martini called transphobia. Oh, what is, what is um, a woman? Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, let's go with that one. Can you give me a definition of woman that, number one, includes all cisgender women and all transgender men? Number two, excludes all cisgendered men and all transgender women? And number three, is exclusively solely based on physical characteristics. You can't. There's, there isn't. Well, I've yet to hear one. A, 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 a solid definition of that that makes sex and gender the same thing and can actually properly define one against the other in a way that includes every single member of this group and excludes every single member of that group and is purely physical. It doesn't make any sense because. Sex is a multivariate system without a single determining factor, solely determining factor, and without a single factor that has uh, just two uh, uh, variables. And gender is a completely separate thing from sex, necessarily. Okay. So um, and so it's the same thing we talk about animals, when we talk about species, when we talk about what our taxonomy is. You know, when, when I said at the beginning of the show that we are apes and that's not a matter of opinion or worldview or whatever like that, um, you... What, that, the reason why I say that is because when you build the classification system for an ape, humans necessarily fall into that group. You don't have to try to put humans into the ape group. When you classify an ape, you end up with a human too. And there was a long time we tried to not do that. When we tried to say, like, 
humans are this other we we made man the tool maker always only man the tool maker right and then jane goodall went out and found chimpanzees making tools and uh, leaky uh, famously said well we either need to redefine tool redefine man or accept the chimpanzees are humans and so like that's the thing man every single time throughout history that we've tried to set ourselves apart it hasn't worked when you use the classification oh, okay. system that we have it, it, it works as well. And you could argue the classification system is broken, but that is a very, very, very expensive thing to say because you now need to find a way to restructure a classification system in a way that works like with what you're saying specifically. And I guarantee you can't do that. You know what I mean? Well, no, I can. I can. Very simply. Um, Go for it. So when you, because you I said, feel like this said, isn't going to be the simple. When we build, I'm oh, sorry, Jay, Mike, were you saying something? Oh, no, no, sorry. Ignore me. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. So when you said, when we build the classification of an ape, and that's a really important comment here. That's a really important statement. And that's what I'm pushing back against a little bit, is that we decide what counts as an ape. Or not, when I say we, actually, I want to break it down a little bit, because we sounds like it's including everyone. We includes biologists. I think... Uh, the FDA. the FDA. Do you know what the FDA classifies bee honey as? It classifies it as raw meat. As a biologist, do you think honey is raw meat? No, but I also think that's a bad analogy because the FDA is a political organization and their motivations are necessarily economic and political. It's the same reason why uh, vegetable or uh, 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 because you brought up tomatoes earlier, tomatoes are taxed differently because they're culinarily vegetables, even though they're biologically fruit. So like biology is not going to be hindered by those same issues. It has been in the past and a big part of biology over the past really two centuries has been to undo that and to say, all right, these were us, you know, these classification systems here were us applying our literally Victorian standards on the rest of the universe. Turns out that doesn't work. Let's let nature tell the story about nature. And that's what biology has been. I mean, er um, earlier, I started with the util utilitarian argument for why in a culinary field, uh, tomatoes are considered vegetables. Uh, even though they're classified as fruits biologically, it's because from a utilitarian perspective, it makes more sense uh, that if you're a if you're in the kitchen culinarily, it makes more sense to call a tomato a vegetable. If you make a dish that you says is only vegetables, has a tomato in it, no one's going to call you out on that. Um, and you're not except there are some fruits salad. that aren't sweet and that you would totally put with vegetables and there are some vegetables that are sweet and you would totally put with fruit like it's, a, uh, it's exactly. the, 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 the long biology, and short of it is you're talking about an arbitrary exactly. classification system by using an arbitrary classification system and you're trying to say well humans do these weird things and it's like yeah what is also arbitrary and I'm but, but, make you can add one more arbitrary classification system which is biblical which is that humans are separate from animals and that's part of the thing is you can make a arbitrary you, because if we can agree that the biological classification things, because you did say we created it, um, if that is fundamentally arbitrary, then a biblical definition of whales as fish. I mean, you know, the fish definition is already a weird one anyway, but um, excluding humans from animals uh, I mean, which we do colloquially anyway, uh, is another arbitrary definition that a that a Christian or whoever could have that is valid in the sense that so long as they're not saying in a biological sense, humans are not animals, still makes sense in the framework of biblically, humans are not animals. Because like if you want to hammer down super hard on the biology thing, like that's inconsistent with your take on trans people. Are, are you still there? I, I I don't know if I'm. Sorry, did I cut out? I think. Oh, I, okay. Have sorry. I there's no. You're there. There's a little issue on my screen as well. So apologies. We'll get Forrest. Um, 
Uh, we'll get forced. I'm not hearing back. forest either, and I, and I thought I would hear for, hear forest at this. No, point. it's forced. Forest well, is about to be back. back. No, you're forced is back. I, I I thought it was me, so we were both kind of going through this. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh. oh I'm sorry. Uh, maybe maybe that's on my end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just really no quick, worries. see, Mike. Uh, earlier, I. I've seen you a few times on the show. Did you say you were a Christian earlier, or did I mishear you? I've never been a Christian. Uh, okay. I I think you said in the example you're presenting as a Christian, and that's what I probably heard. Yeah, no, I, I, I All right. you know, we go to church cha church camps and stuff like that with friends. And uh, so, I mean, there might have been a time where, like, I was thinking about this actually, like, a couple of days ago, where I was like, well, like you guess you could make an argument that there was a time I believed in God, but I don't really take being a kid and having like an attitude towards a proposition no, no, the same no. way that when you're older, because like you're kind of taking anything you can get. And if you just hear something, it's almost like you can just formulate, you know, just a belief on that thing. And so, yeah, so I wasn't I wasn't what would you, you know, what people really mean by when they say they believe in God. Not only am I back, but my okay. quality is significantly better. At yeah, least you look my end. That one, it was way better went, than it was. You went off and got your, you get makeup. That's what happened. Got my glow up. Yeah. I, anyway, Mike, I, uh, yeah, long story short from what I'm hearing is that like anybody can apply any arbitrary thing. I would argue that science has gotten significantly less arbitrary, especially biology uh, over the past couple of centuries. Um, we've been doing a really good job of dismantling old constructs and reapplying you know, looking at nature and letting nature tell the story. And so while I would maintain that, yes, our whole job is to draw boxes around patterns. And the, the reason why I say that is because sometimes those boxes change because we discover new data. That doesn't mean that the boxes are flippant or that they're, they're pointless. It means that we haven't discovered any new data that would make us change the boxes yet. What's important to remember is that you never accept a hypothesis. You fail to reject one. You're always trying to look for a reason to change. You're always trying to reason to prove yourself wrong. And when you can't find one, you cannot prove yourself wrong anymore. That is when you move forward with the proposition. And so when we talk about redrawing the boxes and things like that, all I mean to say is that we found new data. We proved ourselves wrong. We changed our worldview. We changed the way that we see the things around us. That hasn't happened yet in terms of the classification of humans or the you know gender or whatever other you want to point to. We have new data that has made us think about these things the way that we have now. It's not impossible that something new would come up later and change our mind, but you don't get to bank on that possibility as a foundation for what you believe now. That's what crazy people do. And so as it is at this moment, uh, not just based on our classification system, based on the available data at hand, humans are absolutely apes. Humans are absolutely primates. Humans are absolutely mammals. Humans are absolutely animals. And also sex and gender are different things and all the other stuff. Like that's all, th that is all based on the available data. Um, and that's why it's accepted by the scientific community at large. So it's, I wouldn't right, argue I that it's arbitrary out. in terms of like something that you could throw out at any given moment or that it's comparable to the arbitrariness of using the Bible. A couple things I just want to say, first off, trans sure. rights are human rights. Like I'm, you know, big up on that. But Hard agree. the thing about the animals and about classifications is that what I'm trying to draw a distinction between, I'm not trying to argue that within biology, humans are not apes, but I'm saying that a, another substantial group with a different set of criterium could create you're, a you're playing devil's advocate i i understand that i get that what i'm what i'm saying is that i understand that you're playing the devil's advocate however two things being arbitrary doesn't mean that they're arbitrary in the same way and the word arbitrary doesn't always mean something you can just ignore and throw out and change and it doesn't matter uh it, it, it's like you know saying like the drinking age being 21 that's an arbitrary ass number to pick that but it is way closer to your brain being further developed than like seven and so we can't just say it's an arbitrary number. Therefore, it's just the same as saying we can drink at seven. It doesn't really matter because they're all arbitrary numbers. There actually is a reason to stick to that number. May not be the best number, but it's a fuckload better than seven. And so it's the same thing with this. When we talk about, you know, our classification systems of animals, 
yeah, at the end of the day, it is a human built classification system that you can criticize and should criticize. And that's the point of systematics and science. The field of systematics is criticizing that classification system and coming up with better classifications. But what you don't get to say is, well, you have this arbitrary classification and I have this arbitrary classification and they're the same thing because they're both arbitrary. That that doesn't make any sense. So again, I understand that you're, you're playing devil's advocate, but my pushback to that would be one of those is still based in reality and the other one is still silly. And what that doesn't mean that the one based in reality can't be improved, but it can't be improved by being made more silly. Consider the legal system and its definition of humans and animals. The legal I don't think we need to. Is not arbitrary at all. You agree that the legal system is not arbitrary in its definition of what is an animal and what is a person. No. Right. So under a different criterion, we can say, like, legally, people are not animals. Legally. Right, but that's, sort of law, that's, that's why I say, that's why I would say, that's, that's why when I talk about other animals, I say things like other animals or non-human animals. When you go to a, a primatologist or, or an anthropologist or a biomedical scientist or whatever, anybody who studies humans, they're going to talk about non-human primates. They're not just going to say primates because that would include humans. I like I work with people who study this at this very moment. I, I, I literally one of the people who is working in the same lab that I'm working in has an anthropology background and is now doing biomed, and he studies non-human primates, and that is the language that he uses: non-human primates. Because if he just said primates, he would also be talking about humans. He doesn't consider the legal definition or the biblical definition or the anything. He's talking about science because he's a scientist doing science. And so like when we're speaking about reality, we can use real terms. If I'm going to talk about other animals, I'm usually going to say the term other animals. If I'm speaking colloquially, I might just say animals because we in, in common parlance make a distinction. But that doesn't change my or anyone else's classification system. Uh, nor should it stand as a criticism for my or anybody else's classification system. So, Forrest, did Our your friend doesn't use terms? keep creeping thing as a as a uh... yeah exactly. I, I don't <laughs> I don't count creeping thing in my taxonomy. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. It's if if someone was going to try to use biblical classification, we would have a million problems. Like how you know insects, how you classify them, or how you classify birds. Are bats birds or not? Because the Bible says they are. I, and so I, like. I, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, it's, it's <laughs> as as I said a little while ago. If you really want to try to say, you know, this is my classification system based on the Bible, okay, that is a very expensive thing to say. That's not a difference of opinion. That is a very expensive thing that you now have to back up with a lot of changes to everything you say about everything else. Yeah, imagine science uh, classified something as creeping thing. I mean, like yeah. creationists, well, people fish? wouldn't shut up. That's, wouldn't does that, shut does up that include, it. yeah, exactly. Does that include grasshoppers? They're jumping things. Does that include yeah. my neighbor? He's pretty creepy. Does that, you know, what is that? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's just, anyway, we've, we've been going for about 27 minutes and we've got two other calls left and we've still got, you know, we're already 30 minutes over time, but is there anything else you wanted to add there, Mike? There, there's just uh, one last question just for, for, for J. Mike there, as cause I, I don't get a chance to talk to philosopher much, but... Um, I, I won't call little, myself a philosopher think, ever, so just pointing that out. Well, I, I, I'm <laughs> going like, to have to get used to it. Uh, uh, it's so kind of crazy can, to me. Is, can something have uh, free will? Like, can you, can you envision a being that isn't... Uh, affected by determinism or is the my kind of posit here is free will is an error of language uh can you envision a being with free will that is not affected by determin determinism or randomness um are you are you asking me like what my what my view is yeah yeah can something have free will and what does that mean well, that depends. Like, uh, if we're talking about libertarian free will, no, I don't see that as an option. Um, you know, I have some friends and whatnot that give some pushback on it. So, you know, maybe the assessment's not correct or something, which is fine. 
but the way that I look at possibility or modality or um, being able to do otherwise or um, anything like that is, <clears throat> is a question about if the antecedents are fixed. Like if we fix those, uh, I have an issue with explanatory difference, uh, like an explanatory difference principle. And what I mean there is like, if I, if we fix all the facts, like Forrest, you know, makes a sandwich and gets all the, the bread out and the mayonnaise, right. And he's about to eat it. Ugh. Um, yeah, I don't like mayonnaise, mayonnaise either. Yeah, I just said that in case Katie was watching. I'm with you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, but it, if we fix all those facts and we say that, like, in one case, like he eats the sandwich, and then in another case, like it could, you could hold those same antecedents fixed and he could just decide not to eat it. Uh, there needs to be some explanatory difference between those two worlds. And what that's going to amount to in my aspect is some other some difference in the antecedents which prompts the difference in the subsequent uh outcome but determinants and so you can't have a difference in the antecedents well i'm just saying if we're supposing that we say like why did um forest eat the sandwich rather than not eat or you know what is there an explanation for why forest ate the sandwich as opposed to no explanation that's going to be a true dichotomy and if it turns out to be an explanation then what I'm looking for is an ex explanation on uh, like why he ate the sandwich. And if we can use the exact same ex explanation uh, to appeal to him not eating the sandwich. And I'm saying you can't do that because uh, there's an explanatory difference. There's different antecedents that are going to prompt uh, a different outcome. And so the free will isn't even an option in that case, right? It's not even part of like, in my view, it's not even part of the dichotomy. The only way right. that you could okay. get a different option in my view is if there's like something indeterminate or random because like you can imagine well, that we're um, equal free will because then you no no I, I don't yeah i don't know yeah exactly i don't know you would collapse your intentions into like i mean because like pre presumably you don't want free will being a species of indeterminism like that would be very strange to me i mean maybe, maybe someone can make an argument for that and they want to they want to nest it in in that realm or whatever but for me the way that i'm looking at it, it's like if you imagine we just had a uh you know, it's a Play-Doh factory is an example that's given. Um, and we're pumping out red Play-Doh all the time. Uh, and we know that no one came in overnight and put blue dye in the machine. And me and Forrest at the red division, you know, of the of the dough factory or whatever, um, we see blue Play-Doh uh, uh, pump out of the machine. And all the antecedents are the same. The machine's the exact same. Everything's the, the exact same way. But blue comes up. The only way you could have such an explanatory difference uh, without it being determined as if it was random. If it just at some point there was an indeterminate link between like the machine and like the effects that it produces or whatever. And that would explain blue or it would, in a sense, right? It's like kind of like rolling a quantum die. It's like, well, yeah, yeah it, right. we yeah. don't, we well, can't explain right. why it, it rolled six over thing. three, but it was random. Yeah. And neither, so free will doesn't exist in either of those cases, but I would call myself a compatibilist in the sense that, or I lean towards compatibilism. I'll say and that I, the way that I want to use free will is is different than a, a libertarian notion. So, right, right, and that's and that's I think that's all I was trying to kind of do because I think my view of this with a little bit of background in linguistics is like free will is just a term used wrongly. Like we like free will means what we experience is free will, not. But philosophically, you know, we can't exactly show that we have it. So. If, I think when people say we have no free will, I think there, there's two versions of the term and they're using one over the other. But anyway, I appreciate you guys. Yeah, I'm, I, no problem. I, I do, want, I, well, I do want to add just real quick. I don't think that the concept sure, sure. we're tracking with free will on the compatibilist thing is people going like, oh, if you were around, rewinded the clock, I could have done this other thing. Like, I don't think that that's what people really no, mean. I think, what that I think, yeah, I think that the concept that we're actually tracking, and I know there might be a lot of people that disagree with me, is something acting as in according with your desires and what you want some like a normative kind of accordance relation or something. Um, and it wouldn't matter to me whether or not I was like determined to vote, you know, for candidate a or whatever, you know, if someone came up in the machine and plankton got in my head and, you know, just, you know, try to get me the Krabby Patty formula or something, or get me to vote for candidate B uh, that's going to go against the desires that I had. And I think that when we talk about free will and, the context there i think most people are tracking that concept that's going to involve a giant analysis i can't sum it up in this you know last little few sentences but 
Um, there's debate on that. And I, I enjoy that topic, but it's definitely not something that I like go out of my way. It's, I, I can take it or leave it with determinism or compatibilism. I could wake up tomorrow fully determinist, not compatibilist. I wouldn't, it doesn't matter to me.